she is. I'm, I'm killing lies. <clears throat> then she added, I've killed three male flies and two female flies. <laughs> I said, how do you tell the difference between a male and a female fly? And she said that three males were on the TV remote and the two females were on the telephone. <laughs> so, <clears throat> she taught me something along that line. Uh, Sarah's husband, Bill, uh, worked at Hudamaki, and uh, they, uh, some of the fellows over there talked him into going to see a dog fight. I didn't even know they had dog fights anymore. And it must be fairly serious business because they blindfolded him. <laughs> and, and took him to the, this place, and when he got out of the, the place, uh, they took the blindfold off, and there was this big barn, but it was all, looked like it was ready to fall down or something. And so they took him inside, and, you know, the outside, apparently a dog fighting is big business, because inside, it was just flush, really. It had bleachers all around that could seat maybe a, 500, 1,000 people or something, and they had this big pit in there, and, and uh, it was pretty amazing to them. <laughs> and uh, <clears throat> and it apparently it was a big, big night of champions. And they had the one big dog that was a big black dog that had, I mean, it was a cross between a mastiff and a, and a Rock Wilder and a Doberman Pinscher and it was big, mean-looking dog, uh, and then <clears throat> the other one was this little short-legged dog, little white dog, long, had a long snout on it, but short legs and so forth. And Bill thought, boy, this this uh, one dog was called Satan, and the other dog was called Angel. If you can imagine that. And so uh, he, uh, well, was watching, of course, and uh, they, they brought the two dogs into this big pit and turned them loose, and that big Satan boy had bound up to this long little dog, or a big dog, I guess, but uh, short and stubby. And the little angel opened his mouth grabbed Satan and just throttled him and did a twist on him and that was all that she wrote about uh, uh, Satan. <clears throat> and Bill was amazed and he said, what kind of dog was this angel? He'd never seen one like it. And the man said, well, <clears throat> before we cut off its tail and painted it white, it was called an alligator. <laughs> <laughs> so sometimes <clears throat> things are not always what you perceive them to be. Ah, <laughs> 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 uh, okay, we're going to get. <clears throat> Pretty serious this morning, and I'd like to read something. <clears throat> if I can get my throat clear. October second. Today my life began. My parents do not know it yet. I'm as small as a, a pollen of a flower, but it is I already. I will be a girl. I'll have blonde hair and blue eyes and nearly everything is settled already, even that I shall love birds. October 19. I've grown a little, but I'm still too small to do anything by myself. My mother does everything for me, although she still doesn't know that she is carrying me under her heart. But I'm a real person, just as a crumb of bread 
is still real bread. My mother exists, and I do too. October 23rd. My mouth is just now beginning to open. Just think, in a year or so, I'll be laughing, and later I'll start to talk, and my first words will be, Mama. October 25th. Today my heart began to beat. It will beat softly for the rest of my life, never stopping. After many years, it will retire and stop, and then I'll die. November, November 2nd, I'm growing continually. My arms and legs are taking shape, but I must wait a long time before these tiny legs will raise me to my mother's arms, before these little arms will be able to conquer the earth and befriend people. November 12th. Tiny fingers are beginning to form on my hands. How small they are. One day I'll stroke my mother's hair and tell her how nice she is. <clears throat> November 29th, uh, November 20th. Only today the doctor told my mother that I'm living here under her heart. How happy she must be. Are you happy, mother? November 25th, my mother and I, my father are probably thinking about a name for me, and so they don't even know that I'm a little girl, so they're probably calling me Andy, but I want to be called Barbara. I'm growing so big. December 10th, my hair is growing. It is as bright and shiny as the sun. I wonder what kind of hair my mother has. December the 13th. My eyes are almost fully developed, although the lids are still shut. When mother brings me into the world, it will be full of sunshine, overflowing with flowers. I've never seen a flower, you know, but more than anything, I want to see my mother. How do you look, mother? Off of December 24th. My fingers and toes are fully formed. Even my nails are beginning to develop. December 26th. I wonder if my mother hears the delicate beat of my heart. Some children are born with sticky hearts, and then the gentle fingers of the doctor perform miracles to make them breathe uh, healthy. But my heart is healthy. It beats so evenly. Tum tum, tum tum, tum tum. You shall have a healthy dollar, mother. December 28th. Today, my mother killed me. Mm -hmm. Abortion is said a week or two ago it is the largest cause of death yeah. in the world. Yeah. In America, <clears throat> roughly 1,500,000 babies are aborted each year. Pretty serious business. Yeah. If you, well, Exodus 20, 13 is... <clears throat> one of the Ten Commandments, and it says, Thou shalt not kill. But God is telling us here, Thou shalt not murder. Murder is taking an innocent life. Sometimes we kill in battle, in, in uh, the military operations, and sometimes we kill uh, in defense, and so forth, but uh, Exodus 20, 13 is telling us, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not murder. Let's look at Genesis 25, in Genesis chapter 25. 25, and we'll look at a couple verses, 22 and 23. 
verse 22 it says, And the children struggled together within her. And she said, If it be so, why am I thus? And she went to inquire of the Lord. And the Lord said unto her, Two nations are in thy womb, and two manners of people shall be separated from the bowels, and the one people shall be stronger than the other people, and the elder shall serve the younger. But the point I'm making here is there's two children in the womb, not two blobs of, of cells, but two children in the womb. Yeah. And God knows them in the womb. Yeah. 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 Leviticus 18.21 just to kind of go along with what I just said there. 18. Leviticus 18.21 Thou shalt not let any of the seed of thy seed pass through the fire to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of the God. <coughs> I am the Lord. But God, as I think, is teaching us here, none of thy seed, the birth of a, uh, of a new life starts with the seed, and so that if it's not to pass through the fire and be destroyed, uh, as a child, neither shall that seed within the mother pass through and be destroyed. Judges 13, 5. Judges 13, 5. <clears throat> And it says, For lo, thou shalt conceive and bear a son, and no razor shall come upon his head. The child shall be a Nazarite uh, unto God from the womb, and he shall begin to deliver Israel out of the hand of the Philistine. There again, conception, the child within the womb, and it's a human being, not anything other than a human being. Let's go to Psalms and we'll look at a couple places to reinforce that <clears throat> we have a living human being within the womb. Uh, Psalms 127. And uh, verse 3. Lo, children are a heritage of the Lord, and the fruit of the womb of the womb is his reward. Again, we see children, a human being. Uh, Psalms 139 and <clears throat> let's start at verse 13 139 13 for thou hast possessed my reins thou hast covered me in my mother's womb I'll praise thee <clears throat> For I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works that my soul knoweth right well. My substance was not hid from thee when I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lower parts of the earth. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuous were fashioned when as yet there was none of them. You know, it started out as a, a small but living child, and it grew 
grew within the womb. Yeah. And make no mistake about it, <clears throat> was a child. Uh, Ecclesi Ecclesiastes 11.5. Ecclesiastes 11, 5. <clears throat> As thou knowest not what is the way of the spirit, nor how the bones do grow in the womb of her that is with child, even so thou knowest not the works of God, who maketh all. If there's any doubt in anybody's mind, which I'm sure there isn't any within this room, but uh, uh, evolution being evolved uh, is pretty hard to imagine how that could have taken place. Yeah. Now, we can't quite understand how God formed man, man being man and woman, uh, but it's a rather amazing situation that within the womb uh, starts out as nothing that you could even see really growing into a child as we read a little bit before uh, growing and developing and is a is a human Jeremiah chapter 1. Jeremiah 1. We'll look at 4 and 5. Then the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Before I formed thee in thy belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee, and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nation. Now, this was talking about Jeremiah, but but guess what? It's true for all of us. Uh, how many? There's whatever, 7.3 or 4 billion people in the world today. Um, and God knows every single one of them. Yeah. Well, we serve a God that is pretty almighty. Uh, he's not a God of of a stone Ephesus or a, a tree or even in, in uh, India they have a god of the rats the rats being a god but we have the almighty god yeah. he's formed us and he knows us from the beginning while we're in Jeremiah let's turn to Jeremiah 32. Jeremiah 32. And I'm going to look at a verse there 32 35. <coughs> and they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom. To cause their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire unto Molech, which I commanded them not, commanded them not, neither shall it be into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Judah to sin. Well, what's the difference between a child in the womb and a child uh, that they were sacrificing? Uh, just a few days or a few weeks or a few months that's the only difference and God has forbidden yeah. that they should kill a child speaking in this term in terms of uh, uh, maybe a little bit older outside the womb but it's still the same child that is inside the womb yeah. so uh, uh, it's pretty well uh, solid that God has uh, commanded uh, that the child should not be destroyed. <clears throat> if we go to uh, Matthew in the New Testament, 
well, while we're here, let's go to Isaiah. I missed one, but 49. Isaiah 49. And we'll look at a couple verses there. Forty-nine, verse one. <clears throat> Listen, O isles of Jamea, and hearken, ye people from far. The Lord hath called me from the womb; from the bowels of my mother hath He made mention of my name. You know, one day we'll know really what that name is going to be. You know, there's a new name written in glory, and it's mine. Oh yes, it's mine. Yeah. And we'll we'll find out what God has named us. Maybe He named named uh, uh, us, uh, you know, being faithful. Maybe being, you know, uh, maybe a missionary. Maybe a pastor. Maybe somebody that loves Him. Yeah. So we'll find out that new name in glory. One of these days. But it all started in the womb again. Uh, let's go to Matthew uh, chapter 18. Matthew 18. And we'll look at, we'll start in verse 3 and read it. Two or three or several verses maybe. And said, Verily I say unto you, except you be converted and be come as little children, you shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Whosoever therefore shall humble himself as this little child, the same is greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whosoever shall receive one such little child in my name, receiveth me. But Whosoever shall offend one of these little ones which believe in me, it was better for him that a milestone was hanged about his neck and that he was drowned in the depths of the sea. Now that's pretty, pretty serious business that, that the Lord is talking about. <clears throat> Woe unto the world because of offenses, for it must needs be that offenses come, but woe to the man by whom the offenses come. Wherefore, if the hand or thy foot offend thee, cut them off, and cast them uh, from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life whole or maimed rather than having two hands or two feet to be cast into everlasting fire. And if thy eye offends thee, pluck it out and cast it from thee. It is better for thee to enter into life with one eye rather than having two eyes to be cast into hell. Take heed that ye despise not one of these little ones, for I say unto you that in heaven uh, their angels do always behold the face of my Father, which is in heaven. So the little ones, whether it be a child or one in the womb, is a sacred person to God. And so anybody that harms that, takes that life of that individual, is at odds, is against God. Uh, the uh, uh, abortion is, is not a political thing. Now people like to make it a political thing, but it's a moral thing. Yeah. It's not the man, as you know, uh, devises a lot of crazy things, wicked things. Uh, God never does it. Uh, and uh, uh, abortion is definitely a moral thing against God as well as against uh, the child that is is unborn. Uh, <clears throat> as I said earlier, there's roughly uh, one 
million, 500,000 abortions in the United States a year. Now it's really kind of amazing since the government basically legalized abortion. The number before that, before that, was approximately, doesn't make it right, uh, but uh, was approximately 500,000. So it's increased a million a year because of the government's proclamation. And occasionally some of these senators and representatives and even a president or two have ran on a platform of, uh, you know, stop abortions and so forth. But you know what? It's amazing they have never done anything about it. No matter which party. Uh, I think the Democrats generally uh, are pretty outspoken for abortion. The Republicans are pretty much uh, outspoken against it. But guess what? The Republicans don't do any more to solve the problems than the Democrats. Yeah. And yet there's quite a few that run on one of their platforms is that uh, they're, they're against Roe versus Wade or whatever you, the abortion uh, situation. Now, it's really something, uh, there's, I don't know how long I've been up here, how many seconds I've been up here, but there's abortion in the United States every 21 seconds. Hmm. Hour after hour, day after day. In 24 hours, there'll be 3,600 abortions. 3,600. This day, uh, as I said before, abortions is the number one cause of death in the world, and in some in the United States as well. And you know what? Uh, sin is against, like leprosy. I think the pastor talked about leprosy last week. So forth, you know, it grows and it grows. Uh, it, it doesn't stop until basically uh, death. Uh, what's what's the next in line to abortion? Well, we've got a fairly, I guess, uh, Jeff. Oh, no, Matt's up in there. I, I see him. He's He's a little younger than, than uh, Jeff, but, uh, uh, you know, we're a pretty fairly old congregation. <clears throat> and the next in line is euthanasia. You know what that is? Hey, and I can see it potentially on the, on the skyline of politics. Hey, if this individual me, for instance, uh, are unable to, if I'm just costing society money, why not ease me out and that would save, that would be a good thing for America, wouldn't it? We'd have more money for other things. Well, that sounds pretty good, but you know, uh, how about me? <laughs> Do I have a vote in it? <laughs> nah, maybe not. Uh, one of the other, uh, you know, is our government doing the right thing? I'm not sure the total amount. I, I heard it before and I got it written down someplace. Planned Parenthood, uh, they get, I don't know, 
maybe almost 100 percent, but I don't think it's quite that. 80 or 90 percent uh, from the government, our, our government. And it's continued year after year. Now, I'll say this, Pre uh, President Trump was going to try to do away with that or cut it back sizably. Um, that's probably one of the reasons they got rid of him as far as being come a president for a second term. But uh, Planned Parenthood uh, sounds like a good organization if you just read the name. Uh, but 90% of all they do uh, leads to abortion. <clears throat> so is it a serious thing? Serious thing political in America. And worse, the serious thing against God and his will and his way and his desire when we do the things, when we kill kids, and, and that's what they are. The president, uh, I think he was uh, defeated, the president, or not the president, but the governor of Virginia had the audacity to say we can abort a child after it's left its mother's womb. Mm. If, well, he didn't even have an if, but his rationale was uh, maybe the child, the mother wanted a daughter, and it was a boy, so we can we can kill the boy outside the womb. Uh, or if the child, for whatever reason, the things are serious in America. Yeah. Abortion is real. Uh, so uh, we've got a battle ahead of us. Uh, some of us we need to stand up and be counted, and we surely need to get rid of any of these persons that are, when I say get rid of, vote them out, not go shoot them necessarily, but, uh, but vote them out of office. So, you know, that's a good reason to stay in the battle and vote, because that's one of the legal things that we can still do. So, uh, okay, I. Got pretty serious there, and we're probably all discouraged by now. But, <laughs> uh, anybody have any questions?